Hey there everybody. I wanted to take a moment and make a real quick video on how you install stub guards and check them to make sure that they're properly adjusted. One of the benefits of stub guards over a conventional guard, and I kind of show this in one of my videos too, all about hay binds or here's how hay binds work. Stub guards are a short guard, like you can see here, and there is not a uh, long point that comes out like on a wait for the loud truck to pass like on a conventional guard now the benefit of this is it does not allow hay to get lodged in here so i'm going to talk about exactly what you need at least on a 488 new holland 488 that i have here uh, other applications will vary obviously but first over here, we have uh, the hold down. And so why don't we first talk about the anatomy of a stub guard. You have the hold down right here. You have your bolts that go through the stub guard itself, which is underneath. I'll see if I can get a good shot of those. I know the sun is glaring on it. And then you have your shims that go underneath this and then your 7 16 carriage bolts and nuts. And then of course, your knife. And that is the anatomy of a stub guard. So on this New Holland 48, <clears throat> specifically, there's three high hold downs, and then there's 15 of the low hold downs. And then, Underneath, I'll come over here. You need a special stub guard at the ends. So the special one is one short and one long. And this is for the left side of the machine. And the right side has one of these two, except this one is long and this one's short. So you need two of those, a long, short, and then short, long, and then 17 of these actual short guards here. I'm pretty sure it's 17, I literally just counted. You can always go and check on Messick's part list for your application to be sure. So the first thing you should know is your stub guards here are actually offset from the hold downs. And what I mean by that is this is one pair of stub guards right here where my fingers are. This is the entire set. And you can see how half of the hold down <coughs> is on this side and half of it is on this one. So if I wanted to remove this guard right here, I would have to remove both of these hold downs. There's one other part I need to show you that you also need. And it's this single hold down right here for the very end. And here you can see too how the last guard is um, long here and short here. So you would take your knife out, pull your knife out. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you that real quick too. Just come on over here to your knife head. That's the knife head right there. And this big bolt, you just take that nut off and drop it down from below. And then this is your knife head bushing. Well, it's the knife head, the bushing's inside there. You just grab that and the whole knife head will just pull out, pull out very slowly. And then you'll have a big long knife head. By the way, if none of you knew this, this big long tube is storage for an extra knife and this bolt right this nut right here you can screw i think a 5 16 18 bolt into there uh, and actually bolt your knife into there and that's what that's for maybe some of you didn't know that so once you have everything torn down you want to install your guards and just install your guards loosely all the way down 
and put your knife in, slide it down, and then just start with one hold down at a time. And so what I do is I get the knife so it sits right on top of the guard, or I'm sorry, yeah, the guard. Just swallowed a bug. And you place your hold down on it. And you want uh, your knife to not be so tight against this guard that it's binding. However, you don't want it to be so loose that you can actually see a lot of space either. My rule of thumb is if you can slide a business card underneath there, you can see the slightest hairline gap. That's about what you want. Now, I bought my guards and hold downs from Shoop Implement, and uh, they work well, but when I received them, the tips of these were kind of bent up a little bit, just like that. So what I had to do was put this in my vise, this tip like this, and kind of bend the whole arm back, or the whole uh, hold down back just a little bit, just to get these tips so they sit down completely flat. So you adjust your knife so it sits right on the ledger surface of your guard. Let's do that right now by rotating the reel. To do that, we're just going to push up on the reel until we can get that to rotate right where we want it. Can't do this while with two hands. Okay, there we go. Oops. Dang it. There. Let's go. Let's go like that. That'll be good. So now you have your knife sitting right over the top of your guard. And let's see if I can show this. Block some light here. I know this isn't very professional. Can you see how there's barely no space between that knife and that guard? This is a good example right here. They go right along the top of that guard. That is what you are aiming to achieve and you achieve that empirically by adding shims right here. So you're going to need a pile of shims. You can buy several thicknesses of shims and what I did was I bought a couple thicknesses of shims from Shoop and then I took some uh, flashing like you see here I can't even see the camera like you see here and the flashing super thin that's just to get you to where uh, you need to be for fine adjustments and then you just add some shims put your guard back on or your hold down back on tighten it down all the way and then check your spacing if it's too tight you'll know because you should be able to grab your knife and I'm, I'm actually not going to do it because I don't want to cut my fingers but you should be able to grab your knife by the tip and wiggle it like this you see how I'm doing that if you can't grab the knife by the tip and move it back and forth it's too tight and uh, you need to remove some shims from the hold down so once you have your first hold down adjusted and shimmed out so that you uh, have good uh, just the hairline crack between your knife and your guard tighten this down and do the wiggle test pull on it you should be able to pull it in and out then go to your next hold down and do the same shim it look here at your gap pull it out make sure you got play well I shouldn't call it play I should make I should say make sure it's not held down so tight you can't wiggle it back and forth and then you do that 
for every single hold down all the way down so this will take you a while because there are like oh, I think 18 hold downs um, but it's kind of fun if you gap everything out right and shim everything right then you'll have a well adjusted uh, cutter system here and these stub guards work so much better than the traditional guards because you can mow over stuff you've already mowed it doesn't plug what stuff won't plug as much uh, I find it does just a better job mowing in general I don't always have to be stopping to lift up my head to see if if I got any plugs in there you don't get mohawks I can mow faster there's just so many benefits of it I think it costs about three or four hundred dollars wait till a motorcycle goes by three or four hundred dollars give or take uh, one other thing is you will need um, some longer 7 16 inch bolts um, for these and I don't remember if it was only in certain spots or all the way across you know again check the shoop I'm sorry check the Messix parts list and that'll tell you exactly what you need that's what I used to get all my stuff finally once you got it all done and you think it's gapped properly shimmed out take your reel and turn your reel push your reel to the mower and you should be able to rotate your reel easily by hand and watch that cutter bar move and if it's properly adjusted and you've done your test you can wiggle them by finger all the way down then you should be able to rotate it freely and it doesn't bind rotate it several times to make sure it's not binding because if it is that's a great way to uh, uh, blow out your wobble box and then finally once you think that's good the last thing you want to do is hook it up to your tractor and then slowly engage the PTO just run it uh, very slowly for a couple minutes uh, look at it see if you can hear anything that doesn't sound good um, see if you can see anything that is obviously hitting and uh, then go and check your teeth shut the tractor off go and check all your teeth and make sure that all the teeth uh, on your knives are still good if you got teeth that are breaking off somewhere that means you're hitting a guard and you need to respace that out finally the other thing I do is and be careful when I do this you may want gloves I go and I check each hold down and make sure it's not hot uh, if you have any hold downs that are really hot it means that's too tight and it's rubbing against your knife too much for the very last part that I forgot to say is you want to make sure that you're using a brand new knife bar so um, I shouldn't say brand new knife bar I just took my bar and I put all new knives on it because when you're making this adjustment uh, sometimes the knives can bend up or they can get tweaked you want to start with everything in as good a shape as possible so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and finally I'll just give you one other safety tip when you are loosening these nuts here do it in such a way that you are or tightening I should say that you're always pulling the wrench away from the knife and not towards the knife because if you were to slip off and your hand goes forward you could end up with a pretty nice owie and that way, as long as you're always pulling away, then you won't cut yourself. Well, I think that about clears it up for today. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.